All right, so this is our last video in the series covering addition and subtraction uh, intuition. There are so many algorithms out here, but in this series, we just cover a few. We cover some variation of the stack method, and which worked best, I think. The correlation between subtraction and addition, the idea that you can go back and forth between them. The decomposition place value method, the overcompensation method, and finally here, um, what I'm going to call the give and take method. So give and take method, and but you know I don't know what the official name of this is, but you can call it give and take. You can probably call it the balance method here. The idea is to to add and take away to make the problem simpler. What I mean is with the problem we've been looking at in all of these is 304 plus or minus 296. Well, the give and take method would be it would be to take both of these numbers and, and round them out in a way that makes the problem easier to work with. So with addition, this is particularly valuable here because if we have 304 plus 296, well, if we take 304 and subtract 4, right, we get 300. Okay. And if we take 296 and add 4, what do we get? 300. Add these together, we get our answer 600, which is correct. So this method says, look at the numbers you've got, right? Add some and take some away from the other to get friendly numbers, and then add those numbers together for your answer. This doesn't always work so easily, but in this case, it works so wonderfully because 304 and 296 are the same distance from 300. And mathematically, what this looks like, right, if we were to write this out, 300, oops, 304, right, minus 4. I want to write as plus negative 4. I want to write it as addition so I can commute the numbers around. Plus 296, so plus 296 plus 4. We're using addition here so we can reorder the numbers and regroup them however we like, right, to solve this problem. Um, but you know, here what we did when we solved it is we looked at each of the parentheses. This is 300, right? And so is this, and added them together. And that's that's the answer. Another way to look at it, though, mathematically, is to realize, you know, why is this balance out? Well, when you rewrite and regroup everything, I'll commute the numbers, change the order, right? And regroup them, reassociate them. Here we can see that when you add 4 and take 4 away, you're really adding nothing. Right, so the answer hasn't changed. This is still the original problem. And negative 4 and plus 4 is 0. So that does balance out. Um, let me just clear off some of this. So we can look at some more examples. I'll use this space up here because I'm out of room to write. Okay. And, you know, like I said, this works for any number set. Some numbers is not going to be so friendly, but or as friendly as, as this one. Like if I had 312 plus 296, I could still do it, though. For 312, I would take 12 away to get 300. And for 296, the idea would be to add 12, right? You could add 4 to get 300, but then you have to keep track of the difference between how much you added and subtracted, which is fine. But here I'm going to subtract and take away the same amounts. So this gives me 300 plus 308, which is 608, right? And that makes sense. It's it's 8 more than we had before. Excuse me. So it's 608. You know, this works for bigger numbers as well. 5,125 plus, let's say, 4,800. Well, here there are different ways we can do it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 4800 uh, as a reference. I have to add add 200, right, to get 5000. And here I have to take away 200 to balance that out. Now this is not so friendly to subtract 200, but if we subtract in pieces, so 125 minus 125 minus 75, all I'm doing there is splitting 200 up first subtracting 125 and then subtracting another 75 in total I'm taking away 200 I'm using the 125 why because that gets me down to 5000 and then 75 more gets me to what that's 4925 4925 
plus 5,000 is, is our answer, right? 9,925. So the give and take method is, I think, really only helpful with addition. We can analyze it with subtraction, but I wouldn't use it for subtraction because it's not so helpful. This is not really an analysis of the give and take method. This is meant to help you understand when the algorithms are helpful. So I'm saying I don't think it's helpful for subtraction. Um, but one last method for subtraction that I think is really helpful is to use the inverse operation of addition, right? And let me explain what I mean. So if, if I was to tell you, what is 304, my, or ask you, what is 304 minus 296? What you might be thinking is, what is 296, right? Or what do I have to add to 296 to get 304? Yes, to solve for x, you, did, you know, to solve for x here, you would have to subtract 296 from 304, and yes, you would be back at the original problem. You're not changing anything. You're just changing the way your brain looks at the problem. And this is nice because you can start to think, well, I know 296 plus 10 is what? Well, that's 306, and that's too big. So I know if I add 296 plus 8, because we have to get 2 smaller than 306, we get our answer, 304. So the answer is 8. And this is not, you know, this is not easier on, I think, on pencil and paper, necessarily, um, or, or to write it down. However, mentally, if I said, if I asked you what is 304 minus 296, and you're thinking, oh, uh, I have to add 10 to 296 to get 306, so I only have to add 8 to 296 to get 304, then you could think about the difference by using addition. And notice I started by adding a friendly number like 10 to see if I can get an approximate answer. You could add anything, but use friendly numbers to test where the difference is. That'll really help you. All right, thanks.